for people you mentioned in the, in the columns of the diaries that people would say, well, they, they might be happy to or quick to correct you and say, well, actually, on the point of. And then when you did something like one of my all time favorite books, Star of the Sea, and, and it's a historical fiction, but the emphasis on the historical, especially for lovers of history. Yeah. Uh, are people happy to tell you? Joe loved the book, but there was a bit in it where he, yeah. the grass would never have been that long well, because people, it wasn't sunny that day. Yeah, people always do that. Readers of fiction will forgive you almost anything yes, and go yeah. on any journey with you. Mm -hmm. Once any fact that you refer to from the real world is correct, you know, if you get it wrong, it destroys everything for them. And with historical fiction, there's a particular set of challenges yes. because you can't use words that wouldn't have been known mm -hmm. at the time. You can't use scientific discoveries that weren't made then. Yeah. I mean, I will confess, you know, in the privacy of the Late Late Show, the biggest television uh, show in Ireland, to a couple of these that slipped in. Yeah, to well, Star we're all friends sea. here, Joe, yeah. so it's fine. Well, I mean, in the opening chapter of Star of the Sea, um, the prologue, it's, it's a book set in 1847, and it's on a famine ship, mm -hmm. and the ship is leaving Ireland, and the mood is terribly kind of operatic and sad, and the central character of the book, a man named Pius Mulvey, is standing on the deck of the ship, yeah. and it's a cold winter night, a bit like tonight, the clear sky and the stars are kind of prickling in the sky. He's leaving Ireland for the last time. And a warm memory comes back to him of when he was a little lad in the hedge school. The schoolmaster taught him and the other boys a little memory device to remember the sequence of the planets in the solar system. Yeah. And, and it goes, Mary's violet eyes make John sit up nights praying. And the initial letter of each of those words is a planet yeah. in the solar system. So he takes this lovely warm memory and goes off to America and the book comes out and a man writes to me from the British Astronomical uh, Society yeah, to say course. we have a problem of course here he because did, yeah. Mary's violet eyes make John sit up uh, nights. He said nights is, or nights praying, praying is P for Pluto and Pluto was discovered in the 1920s. And we're still not absolutely sure if Pluto exists at all, uh, yeah. but certainly it didn't in 1847. Yeah. Nobody could have known about it in 1847, wow. so that's wrong. So the book became successful, thank God, it was reprinted and I took it out. Yeah. So it then read, Mary's violet eyes make John sit up nights. And then the same wretch wrote to me again. He could have told me this the first time. So we still have a problem because at nights, that's Neptune. And Neptune was discovered in late 1847. Oh, no. So, so you're telling me this poor, starving, <laughs> illiterate peasant on the ship, he's sort of keeping up yeah, very yeah, well yeah, with yeah, the scientific yeah, yeah. journals, you know. So with every reprint of the book, the solar system is kind of getting shorter <laughs> and shorter. <laughs>